grace and pardon the, <clears throat> pardon the blinker <clears throat> but anyway in this video I want to talk about when people try to put you in a box and I, I've mentioned some of this before you know when they try to place you somewhere where they think that you should be and how how you should be uh, and they, they just put you in this place and then they want to treat you that way and they want others to treat you that way and basically they want to set the whole scene for you for everything that anything that happens to you yeah there are some people out there that are that you know these days people just say narcissistic and uh, that's not really diagnosing anybody with a personality disorder but just saying their behaviors are narcissistic you know, abusive you know I think they change they use narcissistic instead of abuse these days really many people do not everybody but yeah this type they, they put people they put a person in a box in their what they think is their place and I don't know about you but I don't let people place me you know they put me where they think I belong in what little cubby hole or something like that no they're going to do it anyway people you know people are going to do this some not everybody of course but this type yeah many of them would and you know to them you're not gonna move outside of it well guess what you are not that important to me you're not important at all that kind really is like that's just pathetic, <laughs> seriously, that they would do something like this. Now I'm going to give an example. Okay, part of the noise, yeah, traffic noise. But in some situations, we, some of us who are not narcissists, we just don't know any better. We just have never run across that kind of situation or been told what we should do in that kind of situation. Like if you're at a job or something. Maybe I'll give more than one example. This is an example of whenever, you, you might not know, okay, and I didn't know the policies of where this where this was. I just had started I had just started a job working as a life enrichment director, which some just call it activity director. My certification was federal, and um, um, I, as a, an activity director and for senior living communities, okay, for senior citizens. And I I'd, I'd tried that out for a few years actually, and it, I never lasted long. And people had warned when I was taking the classes for it warned that you even the instructor she said you every you know to everybody that we need to find one that we fit in because you know and she basically said that that's what it is you might, might go from one to the other to the other to find one that you fit in with and uh, yeah and I heard enough of the other people who had worked in this that field to find out why and yeah you can find some really rotten apples and I did and anyway in that in that field one of the things I'd heard around that time was that if a job had an opening, uh, if there was a job opening, if a place had a job opening, that the reason was because nobody wants to work there. And I found that to be very true in this, that field. Um, oh my goodness, some of the stories I could tell about the, those places that I worked at, oh my goodness. And I also did volunteer work. I started off with doing volunteer work and even during the, the courses that I had to take to earn the certification, I did volunteer work. Seriously, I could tell some stories and that that definitely needs to change because these are elderly people You know elderly people some were just some were just I'm not gonna say just but some were div um, Not elderly, but they were disabled in some way and they needed taken care of and these people like this the ones that are senior living communities that people pay um, a lot to, to live there. Yeah, they paid a lot uh, You know like 10,000 plus a month a month and then too many of them were treated like crap. So yeah, anyway, I got off on a little tangent there. But at this place, it wasn't, it was a nursing home. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, and I had been warned in those classes that nursing homes were the worst of the worst. And unfortunately, that was my experience in going into them and seeing what was going on there. Or even sometimes speaking to someone on the phone about it. Awful. Okay, my experiences all around in these places were, were bad. Yeah, and yes, I knew what I had to report and did, and I can go on from there, but anyway. Yeah, apparently I was still on the tangent, <laughs> but anyway. At this one particular one, it was a senior living in the community, and I had just started working there, and it was a total disaster. Oh my goodness, it was a total disaster. And uh, they, they had just sold it to a new place, and then the main boss, the administrator, he was that was there he was new to the whole field and but because he had a business degree and stuff like that he, he didn't know what he was doing very seriously 
And anyway, I, I had I just started working there. I had not didn't know their policies and there was no training to teach me their policies. Yeah, I was just kinda out on my own. And um so anyway, I had the, now to get to the finally get to the story of somebody wanting to put somebody in their place but somebody not knowing what they're doing, you know, that that this is something they should do. Now, in that position they expected the you know activity director slash life enrichment director to hire to not hire but to get a lot of volunteers, okay, and put the volunteers on a schedule when they would be there and what they were doing, and um, because you know they were cheap and really didn't want to pay. Yeah, people who do volunteer they they said that their worth per hour was something like twenty one dollars an hour. Well, the activity directors didn't make that much. <laughs> But you know they don't pay the volunteers, but they said that's how much is their worth, and um, you know they were paid, but they're not paid. Volunteers are not paid. But anyway, um, so that's what we—that's all we knew was you know you put um, you know volunteers on a schedule to where you know you know somebody's going to be there or not. That's a volunteer. That is not an employee, and that—that that was something that was always on my mind. These are volunteers. These are not employees. They don't have to be on a schedule. They, you know, just show up whenever they feel like showing up. And, you know, as long as the people who are showing up are, um, you know, registered somehow with with them, you know, that you know who they are. So, so it's not just some crazy person off the street that's coming in and dealing with, with um, you know, could be abusive. You, you need to know their name, address, and stuff like that. That, yes, I will say that, yes. And you need to have a background check on them and stuff like that. You know, anybody who's working with children, elderly, anybody really, disabled, anybody. So, anyway, so there was this one woman, she was, you know, they, I had all these, when I inherited, I guess, all these volunteers who were already done, that's already been done with, you know, with their background and all that. And there was this one woman, and it was, she was around my age. And I just didn't understand her because I didn't know the rules there. I didn't know, the, you know, how they said that things had to be. Yeah. Okay, so, so what I did was I tried to get her, you know, to tell me what time she'd be there and stuff. You know, put it on the schedule that they were going to have this activity by this person at this time and this day, you know, this date and all that. She told me she didn't want to do that. And I, w I, w I didn't know what to say, really. She went deeper. She said, "I don't want to be on anybody's schedule. I don't not not I don't want to be on anybody's schedule." She said, I don't, "I'm not the type to be on a schedule. Something like that." So I, that was a long time ago. I don't remember exactly what she said, but you get the gist. She she didn't want to be on a schedule. She wanted to just come in and volunteer when she had time. And I remember I kept talking to her. I don't remember what I said, but it was because I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't know their rules at that place. You know what what these people could do. I, mean, I just didn't know. And, uh, you know, if I could allow somebody to do that even. Yeah, some of these places, yeah. Huh, the rules. But some of the rules, like I said, you know, you need to know them. You need to know, you know, their background. You know, have the background check and all that. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, but, yeah. But the rest of it, when they want some... I Like I said, I even thought, you know, you're putting somebody in a schedule. Okay, that is a volunteer. Why? Because they don't want to pay. They didn't, they, that's my view and I'm sticking to it. That these places didn't want to pay employee, actual staff members. They needed more staff, permanent staff that was doing these jobs. And yeah, I could go on and on about that. But, but that's in a way what I'm trying to talk about is that we have, like, we're taught certain people, you know, like a volunteer is on a schedule. That's what we were taught. But no, you know, that's us putting this person in a box in a way. I mean, it's a little different. I'm stretching here. But you get what I'm saying is that we're writing the narrative for them. No. You know, people, you know, just volunteers, anybody who's just helping out on something, like a church member or, um, I would say that because I think that's a church in front of me. Or is it a bank? I don't know. But, you know, somebody who's just there helping out, you know, of a party, a friend, or whatever. Why is somebody trying to write the narrative, write the, the um, what is it, job outline, job duties. For, that's what I should say, not narrative, but job duties for somebody. When, no, you're not the boss, you're not in charge, you're not the, you see what I'm saying? 
um, you know, of everybody in every way. No, I think that makes sense. Okay, now, why is that on my mind? There's always a reason why something is on my mind when I do a video. And here is, here is one, it's part, at least, is I had recently joined something. Now, I really don't want to go into detail. I actually had thought about it, but no. And, and anyway, this place I could uh, volunteer. Okay, I could. You know, they, in fact, whenever I went there to get a membership to this place, well, actually, I guess I could, should say it's a, um, you know, it's a place where you can go, like, I'll do a video on this, but, like, you can go to places where you can have, um, you know, you can be around people, or you can have your own room, not a, not a bedroom, but just a room, like, like, think about a library, you join a library, you get a library card. You can go into the, some of these places have rooms and you can go in there and read in a quiet room alone or whatever. Or you can sit out in the public. And there are many places that uh, this can happen, you know, that I know of. I mean, seriously, you can go to a cafe or um, what a coffee house. You can go to a re um, park and recreation. Some of them have that. And... and just so on and so forth, you know, on and on. There are various kinds of places, and that's, that's what I did. I joined one, actually two, and I could do that. Okay. Goodness, I had stopped for a coughing and sneezing fit here. But, and when I did that, this woman that I had spoken to on the phone trying to find a place and all that, and she was real polite and helpful, you know, she's about my age, and... Um, told me, how, you know, that it's kind of a sneaky, not a sneaky, but a, a weird way to get there. You would think the ro roads would run, run parallel, but not there. They actually end and start over again somewhere else or something like that. In other words, it's really messed up. <laughs> you know, it is. I, I mean, I've lived here for most of the past, like, 20 years or so. Yeah, and that just threw me off. But anyway... So when I got there, I said, yeah, I think I spoke to you. And I asked about, I said, you know, I told her why I was there. I wanted to walk around and see what it was like, you know, there. So I did that. And I came back and I said, well, what do I need? Do you know, I need to fill out some paperwork? She said, what for? Volunteer? <laughs> Smart ass. Oh, my goodness. I was like, I, I, at the same time, there was another woman who come up. And she was kind of disruptive to what, I mean, I was speaking to this woman, and this woman decided she needed to be first and all this kind of stuff. Wow. And, and this kind of thing does involve uh, assumptions. And she made an assumption, a big one, that I was going to be just a volunteer, like a just, you know, volunteer for make more than she does. <laughs> but, but it wasn't a senior living community, by the way. So it was not. I'm not doing a volunteer after the last one, what they said. Oh, no, never again. But and that's a sad thing. Yeah. But anyway, so I uh, so I told her, no, I said, I'm, I want to uh, see if I need an application for a, a membership, you know, to be a member. And uh, it just a nerve. <laughs> you know, I wasn't being, I, I think I was really caught off guard because I did not expect her attitude and then she changed her attitude for a brief moment you know but she but later on I learned that she is she is somebody who's in charge of some part of it but not that part that was it's weird and uh, anyway she just continued with this attitude like like I was on her payroll you know or a volunteer I was on a, a no <laughs> I'm a member I'm a paying member okay and uh, I just tossed her aside in my mind until this video <laughs> because I've been thinking about that you know this place I could be a volunteer I don't want to be and I that's when I remembered that other woman because in my mind I was thinking I don't want to be a volunteer because I don't want to be on anybody's schedule you know, I don't want to be on a schedule at all and that's how I thought about it and then I then is when I remember that experience with the woman at that senior living community that did not want to be you know on a schedule at all and that's how I feel. Now, like I said, this is not a senior living community, so it's a big, big difference. But I could still do stuff. And I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to do it. I want to be independent. Yeah, I don't want somebody to put me in a box and this is what you are and that's, that's all that you are. <laughs> you see, and that's a mentality of too many is that's all you are. You are just. 
you know, you see what I'm saying? But no, I'm not going to do that. The thing about it is, I put myself in a box too too often. I'm trying to get over that. I'm going to make another video on that one. But anyway, right now I want to go into the store uh, and uh, walk around, take some pictures like I usually do for my channel that has um, well, channels <laughs> that I put shopping videos on. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. What, what about you? Have you ever experienced anything like that? If you have, leave a comment below or if you feel like sharing. If you don't, don't. But Or just whatever. Talk to y'all in another video. Bye.